We just got a call for a recovery. That should be a pretty good one. The dry lake bed is not as dry as it may look. And we have a guy that's up at the north end of the lake right now. Uh, got a hold of us and said, hey, my truck is buried. There's nobody that can come get me. Can you guys help? And as it turns out, we can help. Let's go do a good recovery. It's late in the day, so we're gonna be fighting daylight here every step of the way, so we gotta get in the air and go. So we have a truck, trailer, Skeeter, Allen, and a couple of guys driving there right now. It's about a two hour drive. We couldn't go with them because we just finished up a meeting. So we're jumping in the helicopter. And we're gonna fly up there and meet them. So before any trip in the helicopter, obviously we go through the full checklist. We make sure everything is good. We do an exterior walk around, just a full pre-flight inspection. Then we file our flight plan here. We kind of figure out exactly where we're gonna go, what route we're gonna take, what airspace we're gonna avoid. So that way we know exactly where we're going and we make sure that we can land there. I'm telling you this because the owner of the vehicle that we're going to recover obviously didn't do this whole process that we're doing right now. They probably we couldn't because maybe they didn't have Onyx Off-Road. So Onyx Off-Road is one of the most powerful mapping tools I've ever used in my entire life. Right here, I've got a full mapping system that I use for flying my helicopter. I still use Onyx more regularly because it is so detailed. It's got so many features and things that you just can't find anywhere else. With Onyx, what I'm able to do is I'll get in here, pull up the area, hit the search bar, bam. Punch in the coordinates, there it is. And just like that, it pulls up the location. Now, had the owner of the vehicle that's stuck had Onyx, they could have zoomed in here and been like, oh yeah, nope, there's no off-road trails there. I probably shouldn't go there. The main reasons why I think that you should download Onyx off-road and get the elite membership is because you're gonna get the very most recent satellite imagery available. Literally, you're gonna have the most recent satellite shots out of all your friends, everybody you're traveling with, and it'll be right here on your phone. You've also got access to water levels, snow melt data, private land data, so you can click on a parcel and see who owns it so you can get permission. Guys, I'm telling you, Onyx Off-Road is jam-packed full of features. Onyx Off-Road has decided to sponsor the channel and hook us all up, right? They're gonna give you guys 20% off. All you gotta do is click the link in my description below, use the promo code HEAVYD20, and bam. You, my friend, just got a hell of a deal on one of the most powerful tools that I own. And if you get that elite membership, you're gonna have access to stuff that nobody has. In fact, there's been times where we've been out with search and rescue and different organizations, and we've had more powerful mapping right on our phone available from Onyx Off-Road than even law enforcement and other agencies have. That right there, super cool, and it's one of the main reasons why I continue to use Onyx Off-Road, and I want you guys to give it a try as well. So do me a favor, click the link in my description below, use the promo code HEAVYD20, get your discount, download the app, and go explore the great outdoors. here in literally the middle of nowhere. This is the very north end of the Great Salt Lake. Lake is right there. Our shop and home is like southeast of here. About a 30 minute flight, about a two hour drive for the guys in the truck. They just pulled up pretty much right as we were landing. We had a chance to uh, stop and grab some cool drone shots of the helicopter, which I'm sure you've already enjoyed. And now we got to make our way out to directly south from here. You can see it, there's the truck. We don't have a lot of information as to how or why they were out here. Uh, I just wanted to make this very clear right now. If you're ever near 
the Great Salt Lake, or really any lake beds in Utah, don't drive on them. It's illegal and you're gonna get stuck. And it's really hard on trucks and equipment because this is super full of salt and all sorts of corrosive stuff that'll ruin your vehicle. So it takes a very special vehicle to be able to get out there because you'll see once we get out there, we're gonna be squishing down two, three inches in just pure muck. So I'm surprised the truck actually made it that far, but obviously it's way out there. And then you can see their footprints where they walked back last night. I think they had to walk almost two miles from the truck to their other truck. So we're gonna go unload the Sisu Nasu and then find the cleanest path to get out there. Uh, but again, if you're ever te tempted to drive onto the Great Salt Lake, don't come on this because you'll get stuck unless you want to meet us. But if you do it intentionally to meet us, we're not going to come save you. All right, so just got to the Sisu and looks like we're already off to a great start. The battery's dead. We'll switch right underneath the dash here. That's our battery switch. And, uh, it's connected to like all the lights and all the different accessories we have on this thing. So when it's not running, we turn that off so it doesn't drain the battery. It got left on on the drive out here, so the battery's soft. So we're basically using the trailer battery to jumpstart it. So uh, right, the shot good. here. Nothing. She's reading nine volts. Well, just use your truck to jumpstart the seat soon. That'll work. Is this your uh, truck out here then? It's a friend of mine that I was driving, put some miles on it. So. Why'd you choose out here to go uh, put miles on it? Oh, I did running around on the roads out here. Because oh. if you're going to put miles on a truck, they better be hard miles. Don't put no pansy miles on it. started I love this thing it's a little tight right here but kind of fit just right once I get myself in here battery should be charging off the alternator now and we're gonna load up the ropes and straps and head out to it All right, so we are out at the stuck vehicle and uh, I told you guys this before, this lake bed is deceivingly sloppy, especially after a rainstorm. And we've been getting rain literally all week. So this area, some days can be pure desert, just completely dry as could be. And some days we're dealing with this. My feet are sinking in anywhere between one and four inches depending on where i step sisu nasu got absolutely owned almost about his hands hands got really owned by the mud and uh he said that he was telling me to stop or he was relaying the message to alan but alan didn't get the message to me so i did not stop so hands is now covered in mud and a little cranky with good reason because hands is back looks like that how come you didn't tell Dave to stop for hands? I thought I said stop. I said, hey, hold it. I probably said hold it instead if of stop. If you think that you probably said stop, then you definitely didn't say stop if you can't tell me. I don't remember uh, the exact words I used. You definitely didn't say stop. I mean. I said, I said hold it, 10. I, stop. I said something like that. So. It was, it's barely Three noticeable. Three times. Not really and even noticeable. And I was noticeable waving at him. I was going like this. Hey man, I got a good thumbnail of you right here though. Luckily my fans are good. Still moving lots of air. 
So staying cool, you can see we've got the uh, 450 sitting right here. I mean, if we put it in gear, try to drive it, you'll see she's just gonna wanna sit here and skate. Let's see. Let drive, watch those tires. I mean, literally. Is this truck two-wheel drive? I'm pretty sure this truck's two-wheel drive. Which, this two-wheel drive? Yeah. Oh, there, there's our problem. We got a two-wheel drive truck, 450, 550, so it's got probably 100 PSI or better in those tires. So they're not giving him any flotation. No weight on the back, because it's a flatbed. So, this truck was going to be here for the rest of all time. I think they got stuck yesterday, and it's already kind of washed out since yesterday. But I mean, look at this thing, it is in there. This is why we don't drive on the lake bed. So, we're going to throw uh, Dave up in the truck there. I'm in the Sisu, and we're just going to go ahead and start pulling it. Look how beautiful it is. Buried pretty deep. Boom, baby. Just give her a little bit. Keep going, Sisu. Don't give up. Yes, baby. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about! There ain't nothing the Sisu can't do! Hang on, hands! We still got plenty of sunlight! Radiator cap was off that whole time. Or it popped off at some point. It still didn't even, it got like 215, which is a little hot for it. I thought it was just getting warm working hard, but it's because the radiator cap wasn't on. But you can see, this is why we love the Sisu Nasu. Just tug that thing out, no big deal. That truck probably weighs every bit of eight, 9,000 pounds and uh, was pretty much just dead in the water or dead in the mud. So that was fast. It was like five minutes. We're gonna load up and get out of here. Just like that. Hey, is the radiator cap supposed to be on? What? You're supposed to run the radiator cap sitting on top of the radiator or screwed in? Where do you want it? Well, it was just on top this time. So what, what do we do in the future? I say we put it on the thing and just twist it so that it stays on. Lock it in or yeah, just? Yeah, lock it. Yeah, because they, they just set it on top. Just talk to management and see what they say. I'll talk to the guys and see. Because I don't think that's, I don't think that, was there a checklist or? If it's not doable, that's fine. I just want to throw it out there. Okay. Thank you. 